Hi amazing people! Good to have you back on this super interesting channel where we talk about things out there. Hi! So welcome back. If this is not your first time, you know I love you. Thanks for always tuning in. And if this is your first time, please do not forget to click on the subscribe and the notification you should turn on so you can always get updates as soon as we post stuff here. Thank you as you continue to share this content with your friends and your family, you know, and everyone so that they can learn what you are learning. So I know a couple of us have been anticipating what the next book is and you know, and all of that. Do not worry, I got you, I got you, like I got you. So we are going to be talking about money, money, money. I got an interesting book and ever since I started reading this book, trust me, I have always been meticulous with my money, but no, it has gone to another level with this book. After I, after I commenced the reading of this book, I find it difficult to, you know, buy things that are just, that do not, that are just wants and not needs, you know, that are just for self gratification. I find it hard to even buy them. So I hope, I know that you will learn a lot because I have also learned a lot already and i'm not even done with the book you know i'm still reading you know i do i'm a nine to five uh, i do a lot of other things so this is one of the side things i do i'm not done with the book i am still reading it but i'm trying to bring to us the much that i have read and i hope you would love it i know you would love it so let's go first i would like to say that the interesting thing about this book is that it is written in a st story form yeah it tells a story, so it makes it very relatable. Yes, so you are going to love it, like I said. Are you ready for the great review? <laughs> so the book is The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Klassen. Yes, so let's just commence our reading already. So the book starts by saying that the financial prosperity of a nation is dependent on the prosperity of its individuals it goes ahead to say that this book of cures for lean purses has been termed a guide to financial understanding that indeed it is its purpose to offer those who are ambitious for financial success an insight which will aid them to acquire money to keep money and to make their surpluses earn more money chapter one it's titled The Man Who Desired Gold. I want to bring to your remembrance, yes, that every time we have talked about ambition on this channel and the want to grow, the want to become better, the first thing that all of these authors have talked about is desire. Desire, desire. So the title is The Man Who Desired Gold said everything that starts with it is everything starts with a desire i wrote everything anyone wants to achieve must first be desired so remember that whatever you whatever you want to achieve starts first with a desire to achieve it so chapter one introduces a man to us called banser i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right b-a-n-s-i-r banser <laughs> He was a chariot builder in Babylon and his other, his friend, Kobe, Kobe was a musician. So Banse got tired of, you know, the daily routine of life. You know how you work from morning to night, you toil and toil and toil. And yet you seem not to be making the kind of money that some kind of persons are making. So he got talking with his friend and they were like, we have a friend and this guy is making so much money. What could be his secret and all of that? You get so together they decided to go visit this young man called Akkad to tell them the secret behind his success. I have a few lessons here that I, I, I noted down from chapter one. I'll just quickly read it through for us. The wealth around you will be useless to you if you are not a partaker of it. Life is not interesting or enjoyable for the poor man. Note all of these. 
But a man's wealth is not in the purse he carries. If our purse quickly empties, if there be no golden stream to refill it, you must have a means that constantly or daily keeps your purse full. It costs nothing to seek advice from people who are already excelling in areas where you want to excel. You will succeed in the things you give your best. It is a principle governing the universe. If you can, on your way to the top, help people go up with you. I took this uh, last lesson from the last part of chapter one when Banse and Kobe were going to go. But Banse was like, they shouldn't go alone. Let them talk to other of their friends too, who are, would, may also be interested in learning, in wanting to learn from Akkad the things that he knows that have made him, you know, the richest man in Babylon. So that's pretty much what chapter one is about. The desire and then, you know, the desire made them take a step to seek advice from Akkad because he has excelled in this wealth pursuit and they wanted to hear how he made it that they may apply those principles. So chapter two is titled The Richest Man in Babylon. I already mentioned his name, Akkad. Yes, so let's see. So they eventually went to meet Mr. Akkad. And he was, you know, happy he hosted them and all of that. And there was something I learned from this young man called Akkad. A person who earns his money from illegitimate means will hardly keep this means away from people. You know, people, people want other people to know what they know if it's legitimate. You know, so because they will not last on earth here forever. So they want people to know the things that they know that is helping them. So this was what Akkad exhibited that I loved. So Akkad was so generous, yet grew more and more. So um, generosity is one of the ways of prosperity. You give, there's receiving and giving for Christians. That's what the Bible says. Then he told them, he said, if you're not wealthy, you have either failed to learn the law that governs the building of wealth or you do not observe them. It's one of the things Akkad told them. He said, do not rely on faith, F-A-T-E, for wealth. You know how you just, you do nothing, you just sit down, there's no deliberateness about wanting to be wealthy and you just sit down expecting that maybe one day you win a jackpot. Yeah, you might, but was the... What are the odds that you will, you get? Then he said, being wealthy requires a certain state of mind. Wealth is power. With wealth, many things are possible. Money answered all things. <laughs> so Akkad was explaining to his friends why he decided to be rich. The benefits, the luxuries, he said to himself, I would claim my share of the good things in life this was his own number one desire that he must claim his share of the good things in life there are good things everywhere around you like i said in the quotes that we read when we were reading chapter one he said that the money around you is useless if you're not a particular of it so if you decide to claim your share then you start thinking of ways to claim your share of all the wealth that the earth has in fact, let me read it from, from the book for you. It said, and when I realized all these, I declared to myself that I would claim my share of the good things of life. I would not be one of those who stand afar off, enviously watching other people enjoy. I would not be content to clothe myself in the cheapest raiment that looked respectable. You know, some persons just want enough to go by. It depends on what you want. It said, I would not be satisfied with the lot of a poor man. On the contrary, I would make myself a guest at this banquet of good things. Wealth does not just drop on you. You can, you know, you can, you can encounter big money. Like, you know, come, something happens and then you were lucky enough to come, come, you know, make big money. But if you don't 
know how to keep this wealth, this money running, you're not a wealthy person. Wealth is seen in sustainability of the flow of money. Akkad would also add that time and study would be required if one must achieve anything that one desired. He gave them a couple of lessons. Now, please listen to the lessons. Lesson one, pay yourself from every money you earn. It is very important. You are the first laborer, so you should be the first partaker. You have to pay yourself first. You have to pay into your savings and then all other operational expense that would take you through up until your next payday should be a separate sum. Pay yourself at least 10% of your gross earning. 10% of your take home pay. That's what I meant to say. Lesson two, the money you save becomes a slave that will work for you. The money you save becomes a slave that would work for you. I'd like to read us um, something here. It says, a part of all you earn is yours to keep. It should not be less than a tenth, no matter how little you earn. It can be as much more as you can afford pay yourself first do not buy from the clothes makers and the sandal maker more than you can pay out of the rest and still have enough for food and charity and penance to the gods you know this is the book from babylon so they had the gods <laughs> so pay yourself first and then lesson two what you have saved is what is the money you would eventually invest because that is what what will work for you lesson three it says, not everyone has the information you need. Go to proven professionals of any sector or any subject you seek knowledge about. Now, what led to this issue? When Akkad saved his first, the first amount, you know, in the first year of his savings, because he learned this from somebody who came to where he was working. The man was wealthy and old. He asked the man, oh, how are you making money and all of that? So the man told him, gave him this lesson. So these are the lessons he's repeating to his friends. So when he had saved money at the end of the first year, he gave uh, somebody who was not a jeweler money to invest in jewelry. And when the person went to a far country to buy this jewelry, the person actually bought it, but bought fake items unintentionally because even the person lost money. So this was how Akkad lost his first year's savings. But he didn't stop there. He went ahead to still save the next year. So that was where this lesson came from. He said, not everyone has the information you need. Always consult professionals. Seek advice from those who are competent through their own experience to give it. And then do not be quick to eat off the first profit you make of your investment. Do not be quick. That's another lesson. Lesson number four. Do not be quick to eat off your first profit. The profit of the first profit of your investment. No. Put it back. Let it yield again. Let your first saving, your children, make you grandchildren. They'll make you great grandchildren. They'll make you great great grandchildren. Then when you start, you know, eating from your labor, you won't even feel it because you have so many streams of income. Do not eat off your children. <laughs> Let them make more children for you. We talked about definiteness of purpose when we studied the very last book. What's the title again? Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I can't repeat the same statement here. He said, definiteness of purpose by keeping one tenth of all he earned was how he became rich. You have to define what's the purpose of keeping, of saving this money. I want to be rich. When I save it, I have to, you know, look for people who can advise me on where to invest, people who are professionals to advise me on where to invest. But because he was determined first, determination is what is important here. You have to be determined to save this money because temptations will come and all of that and all of that. But you have to be determined. Now, remember the old man I talked about who advised Ankad on how, Ankad, on how to be wealthy. This old man would eventually, you know, would call, called Akkad to, you know, come and work with him because he saw that Akkad had learned the first, you know, basic things on how to make money. You get. So 
he called Aka to come and work for him. He was very wealthy, but his children were just, you know, interested in spending the money. But he needed somebody he could teach and train. And that was how he bequeathed some of his belongings and properties to Akkad, and Akkad became rich. But he needed someone who already knew the basics of wealth. Because wealth is, building wealth is, is not for people who are interested in just spending it. You have to understand the, what I call the rudiments now, or the basics. So Akkad learned it, and so this man was able, his name was Anglamish. He was able to trust Akkad with his properties and eventually bequeathed some to him. This would lead Akkad to saying that opportunity is a haughty goddess who wastes no time on those who are unprepared. How prepared are you to be wealthy? The person, you don't know how many persons are watching you and how you're spending money. They could have an answer, the answer to all of your problems, but they just want to see and see you and see how you conduct yourself around money or with money matters. You know, Akkad didn't even know that eventually this man would hire him to work for him and then bequeath some properties to him before he died. But he was faithful with the advice the man gave him. He was purposeful about trying to save this money. He saved it. This man was impressed and, you know, hired Akkad and then bequeathed stuff to him and eventually died and Akkad became wealthy. But even after, you know when you bequeath things to fools, they just spend it, lavish it, sell it off and all of that. But Akkad grew and grew and grew on the things that this man gave him and then he became the richest man in Babylon. Nobody heard about this man's sons. Nobody heard about his daughters, nothing, because they did not learn the basics. They were not interested in learning the basics. They just wanted to squander money. So you have to be prepared for any opportunity that you are believing and praying for. Be prepared for it. Then another lesson from Akkad's first year's earnings. Remember I told us that he lost it because he invested it wrongly. But here's what happened. He didn't give up. He saw that, okay, I was able to manage myself, limit my expenses, spend lesser than I earn live below my means i was able to save you know by tightening my belt he said no i can do it the first one was gone because i didn't know a few things he went back he didn't give up he saved again for another year and this time around he invested it right so some some of us we try out savings and then we try to invest and we lose it and then we give up hope on investing money well that doesn't make us any wealthier but I, if you don't invest, you remain the way you are. But if you take the risk, the right risk, risk to invest, you, you, there's a probability that it would work, of course. The last advice in this chapter he gave to his friends was, do not seek to invest in businesses with deceitful interest rates. You know how you pay um, $10,000 to get $2 million, 10000 naira to get $2 million naira those are deceitful um interest rates what in the world or what on earth are you going to buy or trade in a couple in one year two years that would give you two million naira for ten thousand naira it is very deceitful you will lose your money let the rates the interest rates be realistic be believable so no matter how tempting the offers are please Better you keep your money safe in your purses or in your bank account than release it to thieves who will, you know, take away your hard-earned money. You don't want to uh, have to experience those kind of things. It's not really necessary. I'd like to stop here today. This book is, is so, so amazing. I, I We have other chapters, but... I just wanted to do like a brief introduction. So we just did chapter one and two. Chapter two has so much already that we can start practicing to help us earn money. Save at least 10% of all that you have earned. Make sure that you invest only after you have spoken to professionals and people who are already in this field to understand how this business works. You know, talk to professionals. And also, what was the next thing we said? Do not eat up the first offsprings of your investment. 
reinvest and reinvest and reinvest and reinvest until you have so much. So when you take from them, nothing suffers. And the next is to be definite about your purpose. Do not falter in one month. Don't save month one, month two, month three, and then in month four, you skip. No, let every other thing in your life fall into your new budget. There was something he said in this book that I would like to repeat. He told his friends, that's Aka talking to Banse and Kobe, said you would not, uh, you, your problem grows to the level of your income. So you would actually not um, be able to save more money because you're earning more money because your needs and your desires will grow to meet your income. What you can do, be disciplined, reduce expenses so much and try to live by it. Fresh external forces will come to try to make you change your plans and confession and whatever do not let it work do not let it work so 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 thank you for today thank you for joining i know you learned a lot please start practicing these things remember we posted a video early this year where we where we wrote or uh, where we planned to save money it's such a good time that we're studying this book this can help us achieve that financial goal we have for 2023 yes yes so Start today and let's see how many million dollars we can save. So see you next time, see you next time, see you next time. I'll bring you the updates shortly. I'm still reading, I'm still reading. I'll bring you updates shortly. But in the meantime, have fun, take care of yourself. I love you, I love you, I love you. Yeah, keep on, keep on developing yourself. Keep on working on that dream, on that project, on that desire. And it will come to pass. See you next time, same station, same person, same book for now. <laughs> Love you, bye.